205 North Michigan Avenue um, on the 25th floor. Um, I'm a man sales manager for a, a direct sales team of uh, cellular phone agents. I work, um, I got a team of about 12 people that I that, uh, directly oversee. Um, these people are all, um, you know, hardcore uh, cold calling on the street daily. Um, they're out there, um, you know, pushing phones, uh, trying to sell cellular phones um, today. Um, you know, we have, you know, everybody is, um, uh, you know, out there on the streets daily. Um, they're held to a quota. I have a quota. Um, uh, each, uh, you know, each rep is uh, responsible for, um, you know, hitting that quota on a, on a monthly basis. Um, is the quota based on individual units or total sales or what? Uh, quotas are based on uh, new lines of service each month. Uh, well, the way MCI WorldCom sells their service, um, we're the nation's largest reseller of cellular phones in the country. So what we do is um, we basically resell um, the top carriers in each market. For instance, in this market, um, a Cellular One or um, Sprint PCS, um, Ameritech Services. So we, you know we're kind of the jack of all trades. If if a customer needs a cellular phone. Um, uh, basically, we can fit anybody's needs, whether it's nationwide, um, local service that they need, free long distance, free roaming, whatever they need. Um, that's what we do. So what can you tell me about the state of sort of cellular technology and how things have changed over the past decade, what you think about the next decade? Basically now, um, everything is turning towards a digital. Um, it's, uh, in the past, cellular phones have been analog only, uh, which have uh, um, increased um, now to digital. Everything, everything nowadays you hear is, is digital technology, um, which comes with some advan um, advantages as far as features go. Caller ID features, um, ex voicemail, internet access um, on the cellular phones. Um, basically, that's where the, where the market is going. Um, for example, this is um, uh, uh, an old analog phone. Um, basically, everything is moving so quickly um, Basically, two years ago, this was you know top of the line, um, top of the line Nokia um, phone, which is now basically obsolete. We don't sell any of these phones. Uh, I guess our newest product is now is the Samsung, uh, which has lots of nice features. You're, you know, it's internet capable. Um, you can browse um, certain certain web um, websites on with this phone. Um, has you know lots of cool features, voice dial. Um, just talk on the phone, call home. Explain it to um, What voice dial means is just, you know, I, I pick up the phone and, and it dials, I say call home, and it dials that number for me. Don't have to, don't have to worry about, um, um, you know, dialing the phone number or whatever. Just, you know, speak to the phone and it dials it for you. Um, that's, that's another wave of, of cellular phones now is everybody's worried about, um, you know, how everybody's driving down the street talking on the phone and not paying attention to the, to the road. So what, you know, the, the industry is moving towards ways that they can do hands-free, um, that has hands-free capabilities, whether that's with the headset, um, voice dialing, uh, whatever. That, that's, that's, what, that's where the market's going. <clears throat> and, and then, you know, the digital technology. Um, everybody, you know, with the you know, information overload, everybody wants to, to make things as simple as possible where, you know, they can do everything from basically a phone, whether it's checking their email, um, doing... Um, uh, whatever. I mean, it's just it's that's basically where it's going. Um, other other things that we have, um, basically, what this is this is a, a wireless email service. Um, people can actually uh, send messages back with this uh, back and forth with this pager uh, to a computer. Um, I can send a message to my wife's email uh, right at her desk. She can send me messages right back. Um, you know, reply messages right here. So this is really wireless email. Um, very hot product. People want to uh, want that capability where they're wherever they're at. Um, you know they're going to be able to be reached. Um, it's that type of world today. Um, so that's you know another valuable product that we sell. What is it that MCI is selling? When you show me this Motorola, Samsung, and Nokia products, MCI is strictly selling the connection. They're selling the service. I mean, so each of these you know cellular phones has a plan. Um, that, that corresponds with whatever phone that you choose. Basically, everything is, uh, you know, for signing up um, for service, you get a free phone. Um, then we have, you know, special promotions with each plan that we have. So basically, um, uh, 
there's a free phone available on any plan that we sell just for signing up. Um, so it's you know it's a pretty um, and that's basically the way it is with with every cellular phone carrier. So it's kind of a it's a very competitive market. Um, it's difficult to um, you know there's a, there's a, a cellular phone shop on every corner basically. Um, plus you know uh, you know our group of foot soldiers. Uh, we've got 60 sales reps uh, throughout the city of Chicago now. Um, each company has their own force of sales reps, so it's, you can see how it can be very competitive. So when you talk about a uh, force of 60 sales reps, and you also mention them being out on the street as foot soldiers, are you saying that for your office alone you have 60 people out on the streets daily so trying to sign people up? There, there are five, um, five teams of 12 people in the city of Chicago. Um, there's two based out of the downtown location here. Um, there's one based in Orland Park. There's one based at, um, around the O'Hare area, and there's one based like in Oak Brook. Um, so basically there's you know, five teams that are competing against each other um, just with MCI WorldCom. You know, and it does get, you know, it does get competitive within, just within our company. You know, um, you know there's, there's no protected territory, so everybody's out there um, you know, trying to make a living and, and uh, hit as many places as they can. Our emphasis is not on uh, selling to businesses. Our emphasis is selling to um, consumers within their businesses. You know, setting up employee days, um, getting into companies, and, and you know, providing a service and a benefit for companies within employee, um, with you know, large number of employees. Uh, so that's where our, our focus is at. Um, and and however you can get in front of as many people as possible is is um, the best way to do it, because it is a product that basically everyone is a prospect. Not you know, it's not. Um, uh, you know, everyone is either using a cellular phone today, has thought about it, um, or has used one in the past. Um, today, I just read an article the other day, there's 46,000 people daily across the country who buy a cellular phone. Um, so, I mean, so it's, um, some people think that, hey, everybody's got one already, but it's, it's not the case. There's, there's a market for um, new people every day, whether it's a family getting one for their daughter as they grow up, uh, you know, she's just starting to get, you know, she gets her driver's license. And they want to have some communication device, you know, for her to have um, because it's, um, it's just a nice thing to have nowadays. Um, but that's basically what we're doing. In an average day or week, how many new clients or customers do you think your team is signing up? Um, we try to get it, uh, we try to stress uh, everyone to do two to three sales per day. Um, whether that's you know just by you know passing out flyers and get, retrieving calls or setting up shows within uh, a company or, or a, just wherever we can you know get the business at. Like I say, it's strictly cold calling. Um, you know everybody everybody for themselves. So out of the phone book or what? Well, just hitting the streets basically. You know they're out there um, you know pounding the pavement, walking into companies. Um, yeah, walking you know next door or wherever. In the snow. Yep, in the snow, it's 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 uh, it's a, you know there it's a hardcore cold calling business uh, because you know it's you don't have any focus of, of of a group that you're going after. It's like I say, it's basically everybody. Everybody has an um, has a need for this stuff today. So that's what we're doing. How much would it cost me if I walked into your office today? I said I want. I'm a, Young guy living in Chicago, I want to be able to make calls. I don't want to, you know, pay an outrageous amount of money. I want to make long distance calls, but I want it to be worth my while. What, how much would it run me these days, right here in the end of the year 2000, to get a new cellular phone with a service that enabled me to walk out of your office today and being able to make phone calls? Basically, um, it's not going to cost you anything today. That's that's the beauty of it. You know, you go in there and say, hey, the phone's free. Um, you know, you get all these other free uh, things that go along with it. Um, you just got to choose a plan. Um, plans start out basically about 20 bucks a month on a, you know, on a low-end plan that gets you, you know, 100 minutes a month um, free usage. On top of that, we give away free weekend use. Um, so $20 for 100 minutes is roughly 20 cents a minute. Basically, yeah. And, you know, like I say, you get free weekends. Um, so all those minutes are free anytime that you talk on the weekends. We have nationwide toll free. So what that means, as long as you're here, you can call to anywhere in the country, and it's a local call. So if you got relatives who live in California, for instance, and you got free weekends to use, I mean, you could literally sit on the phone for three hours on a Saturday, and it wouldn't cost you anything. Um, just using free minutes.
What would you say the value of the phones that you're giving away for free is right now? The value of the phone are about, um, they range, I guess, the free phones that we offer are about $150. And the way we make that up is, is the customer commits to being a customer of ours for two years. So over a period of time, uh, you know, we make up the phone cost um, with, you know, this, their service amount that they pay each month. How does that work? If you say a commitment of two years, you're telling me that I can walk out of here with a phone in my hand for free. Mm-hmm. Where is the guarantee that I will remain a customer of yours for two years? Well, if you know you sign a contract, and uh, if you break that contract within that period of time, there's a two hundred dollar break fee. So that really covers the cost of that cellular telephone um, that we give you in, in, at the front end. So if you decide, hey, six months from now, I don't want this phone, uh, I want to break this contract, um, then you're looking at paying two hundred dollars to break that contract. How do your contracts compensate for the changing technology and the changing prices? Well, we always have the ability to, uh, you know, to upgrade um, within the contract period. Usually, um, you know, people are, are uh, you know, two, two years or a year is, you know, when the, you know, the technology changes so quickly, um, you know, you're able to, after a year, sign up, um, you know, tack on additional contract, maybe get another phone or, or buy a phone that's... Uh, that's more to your liking or whatever if you know if, if you decide hey I want the newest technology um, a year from now um, you come back into us and say hey I want to move to this it's just a matter of signing up for more contract and uh, you know and uh, getting a new phone so why would anybody contract. in their right mind agree to a two-year contract if the technology and the costs are changing so rapidly you're still in a bind where you have to renegotiate a contract with MCI correct and, and that's and that's where we uh, you know, make our money at it because we're in that contract. You know, they, if they want to uh, get additional services, then we're just we're in the business of re-upping those contracts, and that's how we keep uh, customers for a long period of time. Um, so I mean, that's where I mean, it sounds like everything's great because we're giving away all this free stuff. But over a um, you know over a period of time, I and mean, we're in the business to make money, and uh, um, that's how we do it is is uh, retaining those customers for a long period of time. What's going on today? What drew me in here? Um, we have a, um, a cellular special that we do basically on a monthly basis um, within our uh, uh, within our building complex here. Um, we do a lot of promotions. You know, we pass out a lot of flyers saying, "Hey, come to the 26th floor. Uh, we've got cellular phones uh, on special today." It's a pretty good time of year because you know this is November. You know, Christmas is upon us. This is typically uh, November and December are the biggest months for cellular phone sales throughout the year. So, you know, we're, we're doing a fourth quarter push here, um, you know, getting to, um, you know, selling lots of phones here this month and next month, hopefully. Um, and that's, um, yeah, that's that's basically what we're doing today. Where, what year would you say cellular phones became available to your average consumer? Um, I guess, you know, I hear people talk, you know, uh, every once in a while I say, I was the first cellular phone customer and they had this big big suitcase that they used to carry around and, and you know that cost them a thousand dollars to um, to buy a cellular phone I would say like the uh, late 70s was the the first the beginning of the first cellular phone and, and they were basically a, a suitcase that a, that a customer would carry around uh, in their vehicle um, handhelds uh, have been around probably um, for the last 10 years I guess um, you know and they've and, and they were even larger then now you know as you get to the smaller type handhelds. I mean, this will fit in your shirt pocket. The first handhelds were, you know, what they call the old brick style phones. Uh, you know, they weighed, uh, you know, three or four pounds and, uh, you know, you couldn't put them in your, in a, in a bag or whatever, you know, you weren't carrying around on your side. Now they're, you know, they're, we got some that are as, as small as a cigarette lighter, basically. Um, so that's, um, you know, the technology is, is, is amazing. I was talking to someone yesterday, you know, it's just amazing, you know, we'll get a product in and the next thing you know, it's, it, that phone is discontinued and we've only been selling it for two months just because, you know, these companies, they just pump out these newest, the newest and latest things and, you know, what's flashy is what sells. So what happens to those? What happens to those thousands of cartons of unsold phones? They just become, you know, they, they just, you know, they get resold, um, you know, there's lots of different channels that, that cellular phones can be sold through directly uh, on the streets there's retail stores um, and then there's agent sales who you know people who resell our service on this you know street and then they're like the the small mom and pop uh, 
radio TV store. Um, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll, you know, to, to make extra money, they'll take on our product and, and sell it in their stores. And uh, you know, people will, you know, I always tell my sales rep, people will buy what they set, what you sell them. So there's not, uh, people aren't real educated on this on a daily basis. I mean, we are because this is what we do. But the everyday average customer doesn't know what the newest, latest phones are. Um, a lot of times, you know, people will just say, you know, people will say, well, give me what your best deal is. You know, what phone do I get? Um, so, like I say, people will buy what you sell them. Um, you know, but you, you do come across some, you know, pretty educated customers a lot of times, too. So, you began to say beyond the $20 a month minimum for 100 minutes, what are some different increments? 20, you know, 100 Moves minutes. up from there, uh, $35 will get you from anywhere from two to 400 minutes. Moving up from there... Uh, 60 to 75, 80 dollars will get you uh, 700 to 1,000 minutes in that range. Uh, moving up the high end users, um, 150 bucks will get you, you know, basically 2,000 minutes to use. And those are people that are, uh, uh, you know, using the phone a lot. You know, they use it as a biz basically a business phone. Most people that we sell them to are, are basically uh, casual users in there, anywhere from the um, 200 to 400 minute range. Um, those are people that uh, that we seem to come in contact mostly, um, and then the low end users also. It's just you know the entry level, um, you know, 100 minutes a month. Uh, but that's basically about it. I, you know, maybe I want to get into a little bit about um, uh, this is a business that you know these sales reps that are out there they can really um, make a lot of money. Um, I got several. I got a couple different guys on the team. Um, you know, with their commission, they're going to make a hundred thousand dollars this year. You know, and people, um, you know, people find that hard to believe that, you know, someone giving away a free phone and giving away, you know, all that we're giving away, that they could make a, a decent living at this. And it's, uh, um, it's really, it's really amazing what we can, you know, what we can, uh, what, what a customer or what a, uh, a representative can make for our company. What sorts of skills do you look for in hiring young people who are going to be part of this foot soldier force that you're talking about, uh, what sorts of skills, what sorts of experience do you look for? Pretty much, you know, anybody who's had, uh, you know, I like to hire young, aggressive people. This is kind of an entry-level sales job, so, I mean, it's people who have, you know, worked as a national account manager or, or a uh, regional account manager are not going to fit in real well. I'm looking for people that are that are young, aggressive, that want to, you know, get a start in life or get a, um, a start where they, you know, can get some sales experience behind them. And uh, uh, you know, move up from here. There's opportunities um, within our organization as well as um, MCI WorldCom. Um, plus, you know, this this can give them an opportunity to you know to gain those sales skills that uh, may help them in the future and, and as they move on to other companies. Um, young, aggressive people who are you know not afraid to go out there and, and talk to people and uh, and really hit them you know hit them hard. Because I mean that's that's. It, 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 it doesn't, uh, doesn't take a rocket scientist to do this job, uh, but you just got to be out there talking to people. And if you're not doing that, you're just not going to be successful at it. So when one of your people on your team sells, say, two, three, four, five even a day, if those people are only spending $20 a month on a minimal plan, how is it that they are making uh, such high entry-level uh, salaries? Just... Um, just because of the service, I mean the way we the way it's paid. I mean we each sales rep for each sale that they make, um, they make fifty dollars. You know, just here you go. Here's a fifty dollar bill for that sale that you made. Uh, that's their commission rate. So if they sell, you know, fifty a month, you know, that's going to get them up there um, in a pretty good salary range or, or commission range. And then, and then plus they're all at, you know given a um, a salary, um, their car allowance and things like that 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 are also. Uh, you know, they get them up in that um, different bracket um, or the, the more money that they make. What do you see as the next 5, 10, 20 years in this industry? What kind of, how is the technology changing? I mean, how much smaller than a car lighter can it get? You know, they, I always say that, you know, what's what's going to happen next? I mean, it's getting so small now. They've got a lot of features on them. I think, you know, in the future, I think you're going to see more of a, of a one- uh, everybody's going to have instead of a cellular phone or whatever, they're going to have what they could just a communication device. It's going to be a one one number that they're going to have, whether it's their home, their work, their cell phone. It's all going to be combined, so they can basically be reached wherever they're at. 
whether that's, you know, goes to being on their watch, um, whether it's, uh, you know, something they just carry on. Like I say, it's just going to be a communication device. Um, that's the, I think that's where we're going to. When you say a communication device, how will that be different than a phone? Even if the physical shape becomes smaller or it takes the form of a watch instead of a box of plastic, how does that change? It's just going to be, everything's going to be rolled into one. So everybody's just going to be able to be, it's going to be a virtual, um, a virtual office or a virtual home for them. I mean, they're just going to have one number that they can be reached on, whether it's a person, whether personal at home, whether they're at, uh, you know, it's their email, they're going to be able to receive email on it. Um, they're going to be able to reply to email. Um, they're going to be, be able to reach through the, you know, at, at their work. It's all going to be um, on this just one device. Um, that's where I see it going. Um, you know, because like I say, with these two different products, I mean, some of these are going to be able to be combined. They're even starting to do that now where you can receive email on your phone. So if you're, someone, you know, leaves you an email at your work, it's forward automatically to the phone or to the uh, to paging device. So those are going to be combined, and it's just going to be one sort of device that everybody's going to be uh, communicating with. What about the connection between cell phones and brain tumors? Um, that's, um, they have, there's a lot of talk about that nowadays. Um, that story comes around about every five years. Sometimes I think those uh, those news networks, they run out of stories to, to cover, and so they... Uh, uh, you know, they, they, they dig this stuff up again. There's been no, um, I guess, studies or evidence that say cellular phones cause this, uh, you know, brain tumor or, or cancer or whatever. Um, but, you know, they have the, these news organizations dig up these people who will say possibly this could, this could cause this. You know, and I think it possibly, you know, I'm sure it can, but there's no case that, that's documented that says, this person died because they used a cellular phone. Uh, you know that's that's nonsense. Um, you know there's there are phones that get, that give out more radiation uh, than other phones. Um, the safest phone they they say is this Motorola StarTac. For whatever reason, because as they put this up here, this antenna, you know, falls away from the head. Um, that that's another reason for you know all these hands-free capabilities where. Uh, you know, a person uses a headset where the transceiver of the telephone is away from the, the head or the body. Um, so if they have a headset to hook up to it, that's another reason of, of large headset sales. Other than just because they're traveling on the road and they're not, um, uh, you know, causing accidents on the road. But, you know, I, I, that whole stuff, I, I think a lot of it is just a, a scare tactic to get people... Uh, worked up about it, and like I say, the story comes around about every five years. Um, you know, they come up with some new uh, thing, and I think a lot of times it's just the, org the news organizations running out of sensational stories to cover. So, if there are 20, 260 million people in America, what percentage of our population? Do you think really, it's about uh, cell phones right now. It's about twenty-five percent. Uh, it's amazingly low. I mean, like I say, everybody thinks everybody's got a cell phone already. Um, but it's amazingly low as, as far as total population. You know, of course, a lot of those people that, that are included in that are not eligible. You know, ch you know, you have to be 18 to have a cellular phone. Um, so that's a, that's a feature, um, or that's uh, one thing that what do you we. Mean when you say that? Well, it, when we when we sign up a cellular phone customer, everybody uh, they have to at least be 18 um, in order for us to to accept them as a customer. Um, because it's basically because it, it, we have a contractual situation. Uh, Eighteen-year-old and younger, younger are not um, allowed to get into a contract um, legally. Um, so they, you know, people who have phones that are under eighteen either have to have their parent um, or whatever get a, a cellular phone. Um, also, you know, in order for order for us to take you on as a customer, we have to do a credit check. So credit checks are often uh, a problem for people. Um, because they, you know, they just have bad credit and they're unable to um, get a phone with us. Um, there's other ways that other companies deal with credit situations. There's prepaid services, which we sell, but we don't really. Uh, the direct sales team or my sales team doesn't really handle prepaid situations. Uh, we have retail locations that that handle a lot of our prepaid customers, um, and then a lot of other organizations do um, concentrate on just prepaid.
Um, but as far as us, in order to get into a contract with us, you have to have um, credit that allows you to uh, get the phone. You began to tell me that you commute every day into the city. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I actually live about uh, I actually live about 60 miles from the downtown area, uh, so my commute starts and I get up at uh, uh, get up about 5 a.m. I leave my house at about quarter till six. I'm on the train at uh, 6:35, to, uh, so it takes me about uh, 40 minutes to get to the train. And then another 40 minutes on the train. So I'm, you know, leaving my house at a quarter till six in the morning, getting home at night at about um, quarter till seven. Um, so it's, you know, it's it's definitely a, a difficult commute for me. It's it's, uh, you know, I've got a wife and I got a daughter, and, and uh, sometimes my my daughter doesn't know who I am. But that's you know that's what I got to deal with right now. I mean, hopefully that's not going to be forever. Um, you know, I'm looking to, uh, with this company, there's lots of opportunities to move, move to different areas. There's, you know, promotions that are available, and that's what I'm shooting for. Um, you know, I'm, you know, probably in the next three to four months going to be, you know, taking on a team in St. Louis. So I'll be, you know, traveling to and moving to St. Louis why and starting you, up a new team. Why are you willing to spend so much time commuting? Well, it's, like I say, it's, you know, it's, it's hopefully only for a short period of time. You right. know, I come into this, you know, I came into this, I started... About a year ago, I started at the entry-level sales position, uh, moved up the ladder to, to each of the channels or each of the sales positions within the, you know, as a salesperson. Uh, uh, within eight months, I was, you know, promoted to a sales manager. This was the position that was open, so I decided that this was a move that I wanted to make, so I'm, I'm going to make the sacrifices that I need to do right now in order to, you know, better my or, or, or further my career. Can you tell me a little bit more about the commute? How do you spend the time? What do you sort of well, observe I, going on around you amongst commuter culture? Yeah, um, you know, it's a, the tra I take a train from Naperville each day, so, um, you know, it's a, it's a, an express train. Uh, you know, it's packed trains. There's a lot of people who, who commute from Naperville uh, on a daily basis to the downtown area. Um, Which train is it? It's a metro train? It's a metro train, yeah. So it's, a, um, it's an express train, like I say. And, uh, you know, I, I see a lot of the same people daily, um, but there's not, you know, there's not a lot of conversation that goes on. A lot of people are really doing what they do. I mean, half the people on the train have their laptops out, uh, you know, doing their emails. Half of them? I, I would guess. I mean, and there's, a, there's a good majority of people that have laptops uh, on the train, whether they're, you know, typing up emails, going through stuff. Um, you know, I just, you know, I kind of watch that stuff because I like to watch people. Um, you know, and I, so I keep track of that kind of stuff, and I look around, and you know, I, you know, as I pass people, I see what you know, what's try to look at, see what's on their computer, whether it's a proposal that they're doing, or um, you know, I'm not, I'm not nosy in any way, but I, you know, I just, I just keep, and I look at that stuff because I know that I do stuff. Basically, what I do on my computer, if I don't, um, you know, get to all my emails during the day, if I don't read them all, I'll go back, and you know, on my way home, I'll go through all my emails and read them, you know, pretty thoroughly. You know, I'll. I'll you know, scan through them, you know, throughout the day, but... How many emails do you receive in a day? Probably uh, 20 to 25 emails a day. Um, you know, just human resources stuff, you know, stuff from my boss, you know, information. Because, you know, it's a completely changing organization and quickly changing, I have information that changes daily um, that I need to relay to my sales reps, relay to other people within the organization, uh, you know, get back to them or whatever. So that's... Uh, that's my typical day. Um, I'm on the train uh, on my way home going through my email. I, I use this pager a lot. This is how I basically keep in contact with my sales reps on a daily basis. If I need to contact them and I need to talk, tell everybody in the, on my sales team, I, I use this because, you know, they can't tell me. I, I don't need to call them and leave a voicemail message and, and try to get a hold of everybody with my phone. I can send a group message to everybody. I know they received it because I can go back in here and say, and they can't tell me that they didn't receive it, because I can go back in here and say, uh, I sent this message to you at this time. You received it. Um, don't tell me you didn't get the message. So um, that's the way I do it, you know. So I, I do use this a lot uh, to uh, send information to my sales reps. So how many of these gadgets do you carry around with you on a day? I've got, you know, I've got my phone that I carry on my side with me every day, plus I have my two-way pager that I carry well on my side every day. And, and, then, and then I carry the, 
uh, my laptop home on a daily basis. Um, so that's uh, that's my world, and that's how I'm so connected. So a little bit more about commuting. Do people talk on the train at all? No, that, that's that's one thing. You know, I, like I say, I see these people on a daily basis, but I don't. You know, I don't have conversations with them. I mean, I stand next to them, I sit next to them on a daily basis, I see the same people every day. But there's really not a lot, a whole lot of conversation on, on the train. Um, like I say, everybody's, you know, wrapped up in what they're doing, reading the newspaper, you know, on their computer, uh, reading books or whatever. Um, it's interesting. I, like I say, it's, it's amazing to me, you know, because I, I come from a town of about 500 people. That, uh, that I grew up in, and, and everybody knew everybody. Everybody was in everybody else's business, and if someone did something, uh, you know, some, everybody knew it. And it's kind of funny to me that there's, you know, there's more than, you know, triple that just on the train that I ride to work every day. There's more people on that train than was in my hometown. And so it's amazing to me, and, and uh, like I say, there, there's no conversation really. Um, every once in a while, you, you'll get people that are. You know, the other day, there was a couple guys who got into an argument uh, on the train. They were just, I don't know, I don't know what happened. They, they, I, they were sitting across from me, and all of a sudden, they just got into an argument. And the next thing you know, the other guy got up and left. I don't think they knew each other. I think they just something happened to them. One of them cut each other off, and they were getting on the train. And uh, people get testy, I think. How much do you think you spend monthly commuting to work, and is that covered as part of your salary? That's not covered as part of my salary. We have, uh, you know, we've had long discussions about that. It's kind of a joke around the office about, because um, it's really difficult. I mean, I, I spend, it's, it's 8 50 every day just to ride the train round trip. Um, at the location, I pay $2 every day to uh, um, just to park. Um, Ten fifty a day for that, and that's 10, 50, account for the gas. Correct. Um, so that's basically, you know, that's that's what it costs to do that. And then if I if I drive, because um, there's there's days that I need to drive, I need to get out of here, I need to, you know, be out with one of the sales reps, so I'll just drive down here. Valet parking down here at the uh, at the Lakeshore Athletic Club is uh, eleven dollars a day, and, and that's if you get there before. Uh, 8.30 in the morning and leave before 6 o'clock at night. So anytime you get there after 8.30, then the, then the price changes. It goes up to about uh, 15 or $16 for the full day um, that way. So, I mean, that's where I park. So it's it's definitely expensive. Um, you know, to eat down here, it's it's crazy. I mean, you cannot you cannot get by under $7 for lunch each day. I mean, so that cost, you know, is factored into everything too. And I don't get an expense account. I mean, I have a uh, American Express card that's company provided, but uh, you know my boss is tight on that stuff. He's not, uh, you know, he doesn't give me an allowance to say, oh, hey, you know, eat lunch on us, you know, all week or whatever. So, you know, I got to watch that stuff. So, it, you know, it can, you know, it is fairly expensive to uh, to work down here on a daily basis. What about the experience and the outside of the cost? What's it like working on Michigan Avenue in a skyscraper on the 26th floor? You know, like I say, it's a, it's a different world for me because you know of the background that I come from. Basically, I come from uh, Central Iowa, and uh, a town of 500 people. And, and uh, it's it's if you would have told me two years ago or a, even a year ago that I would be working downtown Chicago in a 45 you know story building, I'd have told you you were nuts. Um, you know, because it's just it's a completely different world for me. You know, it's always been a kind of a you know a dream of mine. I mean, it's it's a um, you know it's it's kind of a a different. You know, like I say, I would, I would have never. I would have told you you were crazy if you would have asked me that a couple of years ago. And uh, yeah, it's it's definitely different. You know, and uh, it's a lot of things going on. I don't I don't do half the things that could. Um, you know, my wife always gets me um, trouble about. You know, we live this close to the city. Um, that has so many things going on and so many cultural events, and we don't get to do any of them. Uh, why, why don't you get to? Well, do just you know, because of my time. You know, I, I'm like I say, you know, each day is is uh, you know basically gone. You know, weekends are um, you know kind of a time to just kind of you know step back and catch your breath because it's it's very fast paced. My wife has a, a you know a job that she works on a daily basis. Like I said, we have a daughter that's two years old. So I mean, we're just we have a very fast paced and busy life. Why are you willing to spend so much of your time in your life uh, committing it to work? Is it strictly about sacrificing now for later, or is there any other? That's what it's about. I mean, I've always been, I've always been driven to, you know, to always to want to succeed.
What is you success? Know, success to me is, uh, you know, getting to the, to the top, I guess, of uh, my profession or whatever it is. You know, I'd like to be, you know, two years from now, a, a regional vice president within this company. And I think that's, you know, that, that's definitely attainable. If, but, you know, I got to, you know, I got to put a lot of, you know, a lot into it. Um, like I say, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do it forever. And I, and I, I feel bad about it uh, with my daughter because a lot of times, uh, you know, it's mommy this, mommy that. It's not, uh, it's not daddy. Um, but I wish, you know, I wish that could, uh, I wish it could be more of that. And I, like I say, I hope it's not like this forever, but I think there's sacrifices that, uh, that I'm, that I'm willing to make now in order to, uh, to make my life better in the future. Anything else comes, that comes to mind? Ideas about the city in general, about the work you do, about the changing technology, ideas about the world? No, I think that's about it. Um, um, you know, I really can't think of anything else that I, that I can add. Um, you know, we've, you know, basically covered everything that I do. Other, other than convenience, do you think that all this second cellular technology is making the world a better place or, you know, making people's lives not necessarily more convenient, but easier? Does it mean that people are happier or they just uh, have things at their fingertips more? Um, well, you know, I think it makes, you know, there's definitely a convenience. I mean, I, I can always, um, you know, I can always sell people on, you know, that people always tell me, um, Oh, I've never, I've never used a phone. I've, I'm 40 years old. I've never had to have a phone in my life. You know, what would I need one for now? And I say, you know, once you get one of these in your hand and, and you start to use it, you see the convenience, whether it's you're at the grocery store and you need to call home and, and uh, you know, say, hey, do I need to pick up some bread here or, or whatever, or uh, they're on the road and, and their car breaks down or, or whatever. I, people start to use this stuff and they can see What's the, the convenience. Last time your car broke down? My, the car hasn't broke down ever, and I, you know, I, that was my, my, before I ever was in this business. Um, my wife wanted to get a cellular phone, and uh, I'm like, I was had the same same thing for her. I'm like, we've never needed this before. You know, you're 23 years old. Why would you ever uh, uh, need one now? And uh, you know, I broke down just you know because it was Christmas or whatever, and I, and I got her one. And uh, after that, I you know I started to see the need of it. Um, and then the convenience of it. Um, and now, I, you know, I, I wouldn't know what to do without this. I mean, it's just, it's just a part of my life. You know, this phone is on from 7 o'clock in the morning, or basically when I leave in the morning at uh, a quarter till 6, it's on from then until 9 or 10 o'clock at night. If I'm awake or if I'm home or if I'm awake, it's on, the phone is on. So I'm basically available from that time till the time I go to bed. And I'll answer my phone any time of night because I have people, you know, these guys are out on the streets daily uh, selling phones. And if they need, need me for something or have a question for me, I want to be able to be there for them. And, uh, you know, so that's, you know, that's my life with a cellular phone. And uh, I wouldn't know what to do without it probably now. And, uh, you know, that's what, I, that's what I want everybody to, to, to feel because the more people that feel like that, the more phones I'm going to sell. And my team's going to sell. Money, 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 money. That's it. That's what it's about. How old are you? 29. Can you tell me your name and where we are once more? My name's Phil Hunter. Um, you're on the 25th floor at MCI Worldcom. Um, Chicago, Illinois, 205 North Michigan Avenue. Thanks, Phil. All right.